Welcome to Boss Up Babes, helping babes show up, boss up, and thrive. With number one best-selling author, global influencer, and ultimate boss babe, Carissa Atkins. Carissa is a health and wellness expert and CEO of the 365 Daily Hustle, here to help mompreneurs and career-focused women boss up and reclaim their healthiest life. She is a pro at cutting through the BS and inspiring massive breakthroughs that help women create healthy routines and habits that facilitate personal and professional growth. Are you ready to reclaim your best life, take action, and be a badass boss babe? Let's get to it. What up, what up? Welcome, welcome to the Boss Up Babe show. We are a weekly show dedicated to all you entrepreneurs, you lady hustlers, you personal development junkies, and just women who are looking to show up, boss up, and thrive. Welcome back to another fun and exciting episode. And oh my gosh, I have one of the best guests possible on today's show. Um, And let me just kind of tell you some words that I would describe my guest for today. So inspiring, joyful, approachable, empowering, calm, and loving. I had the pleasure of meeting Denise a couple of months ago. She actually was a guest on my TV show, Living Real. A lot of you know that I I have the TV show as well. And she came all the way in from Canada and she brought her partner and like, they were just such loving people. And after I got to interview her for the TV show, I'm like, girl, I need you over here on the Boss Up Babe show, helping, you know, my ladies over here in this platform, just really show up and boss up and live their best life. So these are words that I would describe my guest, but she's such a loving human being. You're going to see that come through in this, this interview. In today's episode, we will be guided, supported, and taught easy to implement strategies to help you, the lady boss, right? The lady mom, uh, enhance your relationships. So you guys be ready to dive in as we talk about communication, as we examine the complexities of communication and which is an everyday tool, right? We, we are all using communication and a lot of women, honestly, that I work with, they have a struggle really communicating what they want and their needs. And I'll be honest, I'm no different, right? There are certain areas that I have no problem speaking my truth. And then I tend to be quiet um, and kind of close in a little bit when it comes to having crucial conversations with my husband and partner. I don't know about you, but I don't know if it's a thyroid thing or what, but my throat wants to close up. So I'm actually, I'm going to be learning right along with you guys as we kind of, you know, dive into Denise's brain here. So She's going to teach us the power of active listening. Uh, She's going to show us how sometimes absolutely nothing, saying nothing in certain situations is by far the best response we can have. So with that, uh, welcome Denise Drinkwalter to today's episode. Denise continues to grow and expand her outreach, supporting more and more women every single day in not just her country, but our country too. Her goal is, you know, to just really you know, eradicate the feelings and experiences of isolation, worry, pain, and grief felt in the midlife woman around the globe. So with that, Denise, welcome to Boss Up Babes. Thank you. What a pleasure to be here. It's great to see you again. No, girl, yes. I'm like a part of me, which is I recorded these in live in person so I could see your lovely face again. Um, but so, so good to have you on the show. And, and honestly, I like to start off with every show with what I call like, let's get the party started question. So um, yeah, I have a good question for you. What does the epic life look like for you? What would your most epic life look like? My most epic life. I'm living it now. I'll be honest (laughs) with you. Hey, hey, you know what? Um, Probably the thing that is most important for me is to make sure that every single day I live life for me, by me, because of me. And so that can be taking a few minutes every single day and doing something for myself without having any guilt, any, you know, years ago, I used to have that guilt. I used to have, 
oh, I can't do that. Somebody else has to do that first, all that kind of stuff. And it's like, I needed to help that person. I need to help that person. Now it is, you know what, for me, by me, because of me. And I'm cool with that. And when I do that, ooh, alignment, positivity, like I just feel different. I feel mm. epic. Yeah. So Denise right here living her epic life. Now I'm sure you haven't always been like that. You haven't always been probably in full alignment. Like you didn't just come out of you know the womb and you're like, yes, I am living my most wholeness epic life ever. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's just kind of dive in there to your story a little bit deeper. I would love to know, you know, how Denise found, you know, her path, how she found that sense of freedom and alignment and who is living and how she's living her epic life now. So interesting, I've had an incredible career as an educator. I was in education for 31 years, retired out in 2018, loved the career, loved it, learned so much every single day through the people I got to be with, right? So yeah. it was amazing. Now um, I get to support women around the globe and what an incredible, oh, just so powerful there are so many, so many beautiful people out there. And it is an honor to be a part of their journey. Um, just incredible. I love everything about it. I love the capacity that's out there. And I love helping women look in the mirror and see themselves in a much more robust way than they ever thought possible. Yeah. Yeah. I like y'all. I told you she's such a loving human being. She actually get like when I'm around Denise, I actually feel like my mom is very present. You guys know I lost her a couple, you know, kind of a couple even years ago. It's over a decade ago now, but just she brings this sense of calm and peace, um, you know, in person and to the show. I hope you see that for sure. So let's dive in. Like communication is a juicy topic in the corporate world, in the coaching world, and like normal everyday life, whether you have a teenager or you have a husband. So communication, really, let's just break it down to the bare basics like what is it really and how can we effectively communicate better okay so it's in it's a, it is it's such a complex mm -hmm. piece that we use every single day so we don't understand the depth of complexity that actually exists in communication so communication this is not going to be a surprise you're going to listen and go oh, well yeah that makes sense okay yeah. hello yeah. um so it's the act of giving and receiving because mm -hmm. communication is two way, right? So when communication breaks down and it's not two way, it's no longer communication. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to like bomb drop me. <laughs> so let me just ask you this, because this is like my personal experience and I, and you know, I love like developing, right? I want to become the best version of me. And part of that is recognizing that I'm not a great communicator with my partner um, or I could be better. I'm always a work in progress, but as a coach, I listen so very well. So I've trained my brain when my coaching hat is on to listen to my clients, listen to their needs, their wants, their desires, and to listen to even the messages, messages right, that they're not really saying with their words, but I can hear it oh, so clearly. But what is it that when the, the coaching hat comes off and the wife hat comes on and I'm like, I, I just, I tend to talk to react um, or is that, yeah, like he'll say something that I just, I'm ready to go with my answer. So why is it hard for me to communicate with certain people over, like I'm a genius at listening to my clients. <laughs> so I, this, this answer probably will not surprise you, but the way you even shared that, what I heard you say is when I'm in this role, I'm mm -hmm. this, when I'm in this role, I'm this. Mm -hmm. So you are experiencing yourself through your role. Mm -hmm. What happens if I help you experience yourself through mm -hmm. your person, through your heart mm -hmm. and not through the role with which you sit? Right. And I think that that's, that's good. That's really good. I want to like take a minute to just like set that one yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> the download is happening right now. Um, yeah. Okay. And I think it's, it's easy as women, right? We kind of can identify ourselves as our roles, right? I'm this, I am that. Um, like, do you find that in your work too? Oh, that's, that's how <laughs> we know who we are. 
through the yeah. roles we play. That's how we identify, right? And I know the work that you do for yourself, all of the tuning in, all of those pieces you're doing for you, but there still could be a separation that when you go into your communication with your partner, you go in, you flip and you don't keep yourself grounded. You flip into that role. So there's certain things that your brain neurons are automatically doing, right? So mm -hmm. you're listening to react, not to respond, yeah. right? right? Right. And so oh, yeah. we, right. So we've mm -hmm. been doing this for so many years, right? Because we've got, we do have responsibilities. But as we age, we realize those responsibilities, we don't have to carry on our shoulders all the time anymore. There are other people that get to do that too. So okay. it's understanding what they need. And the only way to do that is through that incredible active listening piece. So the stuff that you do with your clients, what mm -hmm. can you replicate? And when is it good to replicate it? Because not every conversation has to be, okay, now I need to reflect and respond and right? Like <laughs> communicate, right? Yes. But when you know that there's something that you want to specifically talk about, then I talk a lot about having a goal for that conversation. Not it's going to be my way, but right. what is the ultimate purpose of your communication with your partner, let's say? What is it that you want to have the conversation? Why is it happening to happen? And what's yeah. your goal, right? Yeah. And your goal could be, I want to respond and not react. That could be your goal, right? Yeah. yeah. Doesn't and sometimes I wonder if it's, you know, all day for eight hours a day, I listen. And sometimes I'm like, maybe when I'm off, I just want to be the one that talks. I don't know. You know, like who knows, but I want to switch over to the gears um, because I'm, I'm a pretty good listener with my, with my, with my kids. Right. And especially my 15 yeah. year old, my daughter. Um, but as a coach um, and I do like I, my, yeah, I communicate with her definitely different and, and there's a delicate dance with that so that, you know, like the, so that they hear us and they, and then they feel understood, but she'll, her famous thing will be, well, mom, I don't need a coach. So don't coach me. And I'm like, I don't mean to coach you. Cause I, part of listening is just being curious, right? Like, tell me like, why, what, why did you have a bad day? What could you have done to all these questions that I'm so used to as a coach? So I'll ask my daughter that and she's like, I can hear you're coaching me. So don't coach me, you know? So any tips for the mom who's trying to communicate to her teenager or a five-year-old for that matter, right? Yeah, oh, it's a very, this is a really great question because I do get it a lot. Like, mm -hmm. how do I stop? Right. I, I'm just trying to help and I'm not trying to. Right. So ask the question, what do you need from me? Hmm. Like, what do you I'm need raving? from me? Like if they're just right? ranting and raving, um, cause she'll, you know, she just, oh, it's her boyfriend or, oh, it's this or, oh, it's that. And, um, normally then I would be like, Oh, okay. Well, have you tried this? I, I go immediately go into strategy, right? But you're just saying instead of asking that and those questions, say what What do you need from me in this yep. specific moment? Nice. Abs absolutely. That does two things. It shows that other person that you are available for whatever they decide you need. They need from you. Mm -hmm. And it allows you to release yourself from that role, mom, and just be a listener if that's all they need. And they will tell you, I just need you to listen. I need to vent right now. I don't know what I need. Cool. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cause like, sometimes we do just need to vent. <laughs> Absolutely. And you're a safe person to do that with, you know, she knows that information won't go any further. She knows it won't like sometimes friends say they're going to not say anything. And then, you know, uh, whatever. Right. Yeah. So you've got a great relationship there. Communication is fantastic. She's telling you don't coach me. So instead of yeah. having her to do right. And, yeah. and there's a number of reasons, Carissa, why that happens because you're good at it because mm -hmm. that is a strong suit of yours. You just want to help. You want to support her as your mom, as the mom, right? Yeah. Well, none of them are wrong reasons, not mm -hmm. at all. 
but it's important, especially when they're venting, just to let them release it Mm. and let them go on and on and give time and space. Let Mm. it sit. Like it might be uncomfortable. So it's going to be a huge learning curve where you are sitting, your skin climbing or, you know, climbing out of your skin going, I just, I have all the answers for you. No, (laughs) no. Like, trust me, I've been here. (laughs) Right? That's exactly. A word. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. So let's flip that though. Mm-hmm. What would you feel like if somebody were doing, can you flip it and put yourself in her shoes? If you needed to vent and you had somebody saying, oh, have you tried this? Have you tried this? Have you tried this? How would that feel for you? If you can flip yourself in that situation, yeah. you might see a different angle to it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I love that. You guys, she just gave two golden nuggets. Okay. So right now y'all know, like, I'm like a big encourager, get a piece of paper and a pen out. That is the magic question that we all need to memorize and get really comfortable with, with sitting after that, with that silence afterwards. So what do you need from me? Yeah. And then pause, right? It's our yeah. role then to just stop and, and, and then they'll tell us. Um, and then the, the second golden nugget was just, you know, practice pausing that, un, that awkward pause is something if you don't, if you don't like the pause, there's probably some, some inner work that we would have to do, right. Uh, yeah. to, to, to work on that, that awkward pause. So, Hey, cool. I love these tips. Let's keep this going. Um, we're not going to take a break. Cause I just, I love the conversation and I want to make sure we have lots of time. Um, so you have, you predominantly work with, um, with moms, right. That are transitioned. Tell me who you specifically work with. And then this amazing Facebook community that you offer these, these women. Abs- absolutely. So my primary um, clients are moms with mm-hmm. adult children. And quite honestly, I am finding it does not mean you have to be, I have people reach out. I'm not an empty nester yet. I have teenagers. That's cool. I've been an empty nester for years and I'm struggling with my 40 year old son. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'm seriously, right? All right. It's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. And so, yeah, I work with moms who are in a role um, as a mom and the children are not needing you in the same way. And you don't know how to make that transition. How do I support my kids without interfering? How do, if they're estranged, what do I do with that? Like there's, I mean, there's all kinds of levels and issues, but I support all of it. Um, So whatever you're going through as a mom and your role transitioning, and it seems like only yesterday they were babies and you're like, okay, I wanted them out, but now, oh my God, I need them back. No, I don't. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. There's a very um, Facebook group that these women can go to. Absolutely. It's a free Facebook group. And I put all kinds of strategies, tips. I go on live every Wednesday. If there's something specific they want to talk about, they tell me the topics, they tell me their questions. I do hotspot coaching in there. I have uh, boot camps, that, free boot camps that can be accessed through there. Like there's everything and anything that they need, we create. Yeah. Okay. And I'm definitely, yeah. you guys, that link is in the show notes below. I'm going to be just like you and I'm going to go to the Facebook group and I'm going to hit join and Denise is going <laughs> to accept us um, because I would love, and you can put this on your next, you know, live. Like um, I am trying to get rid of my kids. Um, you know, I have a 20, not my 15 year old, my 21 year old, um, you know, so he, yes, he wants to be independent and we're getting ready to move him back, um, to his hometown. Cause you know, I moved and he stayed there and then he eventually came back and then, and now he's ready to go. But like, I just, I want to support him, but how can I stay true and, and not bring him back? So if not, this is my son that will literally probably live with me for the rest of my life if I let him, but I'm not going to. So I would love, you know, if you wanted to tackle that topic on your own, you know, um, Facebook group or something, it's like, how can I communicate effectively so that he knows I love him, but he needs to learn to go out and be a responsible adult and not just, you know, live here and work and play his games. And, you know, um, yeah, no, I don't totally different. She's like, ex, you know, her ex at plan to go be a doctor, different story, but, but isn't that right? funny how, how they're all so different. So if, if not the face, is that the best way for people to find you as the Facebook group or 
Yep. Or um, my website, denisedrinkwalter.com is also, you can access me there. I have, you know, all kinds of stuff in there. You can access free consultations to see what's my best way to connect with you or just, you know, if you need a quick hotspot tip, connect with me there. Yeah. Love it. You guys go, go take advantage of her, her free consult. Yeah. Is it free consult to kind yeah. of like, if you can help yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. 20 minutes. Yep. Yeah. Many women need this, but um, beautiful. Okay. Well, let's continue on the conversation because you know, there, there's this thing called active listening and you briefly mentioned it. And we then discussed how I'm not a great yet. I, I'm getting better um, at being an active listener, but what is the role of an active listener? Like, what does that actually look like? Yeah, we hear about it, but it's, it's a little more to it than just, yep, I'm hearing what they're saying. So there's mm -hmm. a, a number of initial strategies that you have to implement right off the hop in order to limit mm -hmm. outside noise. So literally the infamous, you know, this little baby, if you're getting into a conversation, like we talked earlier, the goal is like, uh, you know, you have a, a goal that you want to meet in terms of the conversation. That's probably a really going to be an active listening, a pre-planned active listening one. So you'll want to put all the distractions away, literally shut the phone off. If you, even if you visually see your phone, your brain is so attached to it that you're not going to focus on the conversation. So if you need to hide your phone, turn it off, whatever. Mm -hmm. clear distractions, right? Clear them away. Um, that's primary. That's really important, important for the listener too. So yeah. you'll have to see how you can do that, right? Is that part. Mm -hmm. um, then when you're having the conversation, it is imperative that you rephrase what you think you heard and you say, I think I heard you say, okay? Because if it isn't, then it's your interpretation. That's the communication piece. You take it in. You know that game telephone you used to play as kids? Went around the circle, <laughs> right? Hey, yes. the first person knew what they said. Every time it hits another person, it gets interpreted and changed, right? Mm -hmm. So we all come from all of the experiences we have. Even though you're in the same house, you might see things differently or hear things differently. So it's important to repeat back by saying, what I think I heard you say was, and say what you heard, the key, the key points that you heard. This is really frustrating you because blah, blah, whatever you heard. And then confirm, is that, did I get it all? Did I hear it right, right? Because then they can say, Oh my God, you missed this whole section. Like you might've missed something. Again, you pull in what's important that your ears are hearing, but what they're saying, they maybe weren't clear. They maybe need to clarify. So that's their opportunity to bring it back and say, no, no, no. So then you say it again. So what I heard you say, because now it's no longer thinking. Now you're engaged in the next level of the conversation. So now it's no longer, I think it's okay. I heard you say, is that accurate? Yes. Okay. So in communication, the brain has to take it in. Mm -hmm. First, the ears bring it in. The brain has to hear it. It has to absorb it. It has to evaluate it. It has to synthesize. And then it creates a response, right? There's a yeah. lot of work going on yeah. there, right? <laughs> and it's split second. So when we don't use active listening, we jump on how it feels in our body. And it's our response. It's not listening to what they're actually saying. It's our response that's we're reacting to right so to yes. get it in and really absorb what they're saying then you have your opportunity okay so what I heard you say and here's what I'm thinking around that right and right. if you really want to make it powerful make sure they understand your message back mm. right yeah yeah and that's that's I'm writing taking notes right <laughs> Um, because coaches need coach too. So I'm like, oh yes, bring it all in. Um, and that's so important. I will say, um, you know, to, to bring that in and then, cause sometimes I've been caught on like the first bullet point, right. And whether it's good or bad, you guys, we're not just all talking about like not so great fun conversations. Like he could bring up a, a win or, you know, something that was really great. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm still celebrating over here and having a party in my head for you over here, but I didn't hear anything. Else you just right. Said. 
So I love that. That simple question is, I think I heard you say, or, you know, did I hear you say, blah, 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 repeat what you heard back. Um, and then confirm that with, did I get that all? Yeah. All right, cool. So um, active, uh, active, um, like pausing, right? Let's go back to yes. that pause. Because after this, I can see myself saying, did I get that all? Wait, 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 you know? So let's talk about the pause time, you know, like the power of silence and when, you know, yeah. how powerful is silence? I know if you're in sales, uh, silence is really, really powerful. Um, but yeah, let's talk about the power of the silence. Yeah. So in reality, when things are heated, let's say there's an emotional reaction in your body. Like that's the other thing that's so important to tune in when you're communicating. You mentioned earlier at the beginning of the show, um, I can, I can feel it. I can sense their words are saying something, but there's something else deeper going on behind the scenes. Right? So when you're in a conversation, body language speaks like 80%. So their message coming out of their mouth and what's going on in their body can be really different. And you can tune into that. And when you do your body can react and respond too. So tuning into how you are responding is really important. If you're noticing that you're elevating if you're noticing that you're getting like, oh, you're not hearing me or whatever, <laughs> yeah, I'm, um, then that's when you pause and you can just say, ah, I just need a minute. I got to process some stuff and that's okay. That's giving yourself permission. You don't even have to say that, but you can say, there's a lot here. I just need to process this. Just hold on a minute. And that's fair. That's yeah. absolutely yeah. fair. Um, and you mentioned about the throat, the knot in the throat, yeah. very common. That's yeah. that. That's why I'm saying tuning into the body. Why is that happening? Why is that showing me? This is a hard conversation to have what's really going on there. And you can dig deeper and really get a deeper understanding as to why that knot is happening. Maybe yes. it's because it's something you've tried to talk about before. Maybe it's, I mean, there could be all kinds of things, but sure. tune into that notice when that happens is it certain topics is it certain times like really tune in so you can start to understand those pieces yeah. and when you start to use this active listening the pausing and waiting then that will help you realign right you don't have to we don't have to have all the answers we let the adults <laughs> i know let go of that expectation <laughs> the cape can be gone who am I? Am I? Because of you, right? Yeah, no, that's that's good. And, and that's so, so incredibly important, you guys. They're, like that pause is, is important, like I mentioned in sales. Um, but I used to have um, a really uh, not so nourishing money belief. So every time I would talk about money, that's where I would always notice my throat, like just like hurt, right? Like I could almost have a sore throat the whole rest of the day because it was, it brought so much tension and stress around it until a couple of years ago, I worked with a coach and she helped me let go of limiting beliefs around money. And now I'm like, I can talk about money all day long. Let's talk about how much we make. Let's talk about this. Let's talk. Like, so it truly is like, you can get past that, but you're your body has all kinds of wisdom within it. And if you're feeling that, maybe you feel your neck or that instant headache or something, right? That's your body's wisdom trying to talk to you. So it's our job to sit down, slow our roll and listen to it. So Denise, great, great advice. Oh my gosh. Like this is truly from start to finish, like tips and strategies worked throughout. One lack, last quick question for you. Because a lot of our listeners are lady bosses. They're busy. They're, you know, they're hustlers. So what bit of advice would you give them that listener that is looking to show up boss up and honestly communicate a little bit better what's one major piece I think the biggest piece um, is to actually just kind of what you were talking about tune into your body when you start to tune into your body and get out of your head mm -hmm. then you will start to move what you need to move in order to have better conversations have better mm -hmm. communication yeah Love yeah, because you're yeah. attaching it to other things, right? And yeah, and tune what in to you. Circle, right? Like your body is communicating and we need to pause and ask what the heck it needs um, at all times, right? When we'll be like, right? 
I have all these migraines. I'm like, well, let's stop. And, um, you know, how much water have you drank? Like there's, there's a reason why you have headaches. You know, we're not just born to have headaches every day. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been such a pleasure. I would love to, you know, get you back on at some point in the future and, and keep picking your brain on these matters. You guys, if you're looking to boss up and have some crucial conversations, whether it's in the workplace, maybe you need to stand up for yourself. Maybe you're trying to ask the boss for the raise. Maybe you're trying to get the kids out of the house. Maybe you're trying to repair the relationship with your husband or your partner. You guys call Denise. She is truly the expert and she knows everything about communication. I mean, she spent so many years in, as a communicator and uh, in, in the school systems and as an educator, it takes a lot. Um, and, and she is your go-to expert for that. So with everything, with everything that we've mentioned today. If you are looking to boss up in your health, um, I would love to support you in that way. I'm a master coach and a champion for all things women's mental and physical health. I literally wake up every single day helping, you know, with the goal of helping, you know, inspire women to become the best versions of themselves. And if I can't do it, then I'm like, Hey, Denise, she needs some great coaching on communication and unblocking all of that. Um, so the whole idea here is that you are supported, you are loved. You know, there are lots of women out here that want to encourage you to be the best self that you can be. So, you know, take us up on all of the resources that we have book that call with Denise, um, and if you're looking to, to get healthy in, in the next couple of months, book your 15 minute get fit clarity call with me. But with that, Denise, thank you for being a beautiful guest on the show. And we're going to have you back soon. Thank you for listening to Boss Up Babes with Carissa Adkins, bringing you tangible tips and expert coaching advice to help you boss up and get healthy. Tune in every second and fourth Tuesday at 1230 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For interviews with industry leaders and powerhouse boss babes that will empower you to take action and live your best life. If you're ready to boss up and work with Carissa in one of her transformative group coaching programs, visit 365dailyhustle.com.